Hello, I'm Carl Mills, and welcome to video 6. In this video, we'll be preparing to graduate the top and the back plates, and then I will demonstrate on how to do so using the method I have found the easiest for me. There are other methods available for graduating the plates. Feel free to explore them, read about them, study them, practice them. Choose the process that works for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. The first step that I do is I fabricate a fixture to hold the plate while I graduate it. This fixture is made out of RTV silicone rubber. It's very easy to make, but it's, it's a little bit expensive. But the value and usability that you get out of it is greatly outweighs the cost in preventing you from damaging plates while you're carving the inside. It's a very simple process to do, and I will go through that process with you. In this process, I will be using some stretch wrap two-part silicone mold rubber with a four-hour set time. Some regular shipping tape and the top plate for the instrument. What I'll do is I'll wrap the top plate in the stretch wrap. I now have about three layers of tape around the perimeter. And I put one section of tape to cover the seabout area on top of the, uh, the stretch wrap. And ensure that you don't have any gaps, otherwise your RTV will get onto your top plate. The next step will be mixing the RTV. It's very simple to use. You mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio. Pour in part A completely. Next step is to pour in part B you will have a working time of approximately 10 minutes. One thing to remember is when you're finished with this it will be usable for other instruments with the same arching. Next I just take and I pour it into the prepared mold on the top plate. By shaking it, you can get some of the trapped air bubbles out. Now we're going to set this off to the side and let it set up. It takes four hours for it to set up. While I'm waiting on that RTV to set up, refer to your plan for your thickness and positions. Mark your locations of your archings and the center line on the mold side of the plate. And then from there you can determine your contours and mark your pattern of your graduation. I always take and mark the inside edge of the cove around the perimeter so that I have a guideline. The overhang will be three millimeters. So your cove measurement and your overhang measurement combined will be the position that I draw the circle around the perimeter of the instrument with a compass. Go ahead and mark the area. Now you gotta draw in an area for your blocks. I leave approximately one half inch 
inside and draw a circle. The neck block is a little bit more substantial and is not as rounded off as the end block will be. So you have to allow a little bit larger area for the neck block position. Here I have darkened in the lines I've previously mentioned so that you can see them easier on the video. Just remember these are just guidelines and they're going to help you to graduate your plate in an asymmetrical manner. With an asymmetrical plate you go back to the theory of a trampoline. When a trampoline, when bounced in the middle, is symmetrical. Everything flexes around the perimeter at the same time. But on a violin, the back and the top plate, the sound post, is in about this position. So when you put apply pressure on that, you're not actually pushing squarely in the center of the plate. So with the asymmetrical type of graduation, these areas being a little bit thinner than this area here will allow the whole plate to move evenly up and down. And the movement of the plate is what actually creates the pressure wave inside of the instrument. I will now go ahead and lay out the graduating for the back plate. I have now completed laying out the approximate pattern of the graduation of this instrument. You must remember that graduating a piece of wood is an art in itself. As you remove the material, you must tap it to see what it sounds like. Not always will the graduation for one piece of wood work for the next. Each piece of wood is different in its tonal qualities and will respond differently to the same application of force. Some will respond at a higher note, some at a lower note, even though the wood came out of the same log depending on the grain orientation and the density of the material will determine the frequency at which that wood will vibrate. I will next take and drill pilot holes set to one millimeter above the depth required for each position. Right around the perimeter two millimeters. So I will set the depth at one millimeter on my drill and only drill a stop hole down one millimeter. Then as I gouge out the material, when that hole disappears, I know to stop and I still have one millimeter of material to remove, but then I can do the fine tuning and scraping 